All right, we are live for another Thursday's Top Tips in Real Estate here on the Aero Title Services page. And we go live every single Thursday with a new topic in real estate. And we have local realtors and lenders come on here each and every week to share with you guys their big brains in real estate on these topics, because there's a lot of movement going on in the real estate market right now. It is just insane, but that's what we're here for. We wanted to educate the public on just what's going on and what are the best tips for you, hence the Thursday's top tips in real estate. So we do host this every single week in three parts. So the first portion is going to be where we talk about the topic that we're talking about, which today, if you are a first time home buyer or you know someone who is a first time home buyer, make sure you're sharing this video with them because it is going to be all about the do's and don'ts of being a first time home buyer. So it's a really juicy topic that I know we're all very excited to get into. Um, so we're gonna each uh, talk about that topic. We'll have a little discussion portion. Then the second portion will be our number one top tip of the week in real estate this week. And the third portion will be any announcements that these amazing local professionals have. So. It's always great information all the way throughout. You can always rewatch these videos on our YouTube channel, Aero Title Services. Um, and it's just great to get a well-rounded idea of all of those um, topics that we go over, as well as if you have any questions for the local professionals who are on this call, you can go to the description of this video, click on their Facebook pages and get connected with them. They always have great content on there and it's just always great to um, get feedback from them. And it's free free to have a conversation. So we will go into our big topic now, first time home buyers do's and don'ts. And Eric is going to be starting us off today. So Eric, what is your do's or don'ts or both? Well, first, thank you, Lucy, for this wonderful platform. Eric Grimsman from eXp Realty. Um, so some do's and don'ts of being a first time home buyer that I've come across that I think are very important. Um, first and for foremost, hire a local professional. <laughs> uh, very, very important. You don't want to try to do this on your own, um, especially that the real estate transactions are very in-depth and there's a lot of moving parts going on uh, within the transaction and the process. A uh, couple other things that I'm sure that our, uh, our lenders are going to talk about, but just wanted to kind of throw them out there, is make sure you, uh, you have two years of income uh, at the same um, you know, uh, same job. Uh, so you can claim that as your income and show money to purchase your new home. And then the third thing for me was um, checking your credit score uh, and credit report ahead of time to see if there's any types of disputes you may have to take off your credit to, in order to get a higher credit score to get you a better um, rate. So those are my do's and don'ts that I came across. Great, great um, tips and do's to start off this conversation, Eric. Um, very, very relevant. And yes, the first step is definitely working with local professionals in this um, crazy real estate industry and just how many changes are going on in a daily basis. So love that start off to the conversation, Eric. And we are now going to go to Alana. Alana, what do you have to share with us today? Well, I love that tip, Eric. And I Absolutely. I'm going to chime right in. Having that conversation with your professionals, your lender is going to be able to tell you the ins and outs. But if you're surprised by your credit realm, uh, that means you didn't do that checking first. And, you know, nobody likes to be in that situation where they're delivering news you didn't expect. So be proactive, prepare yourself. Um, a couple of don'ts that I have experienced personally, I find them kind of comical. So I'm going to share them. Um, one of them is don't hide your money under the mattress. Uh, when you have a substantial amount to put towards your home purchase, that's amazing. And we're so excited to hear that because it's, it's a great thing. But when your money isn't seasoned and doesn't spend a specific amount of time in an account, which a lender would be able to tell you more in depth about the timeframes and rules of those. Um, my understanding in that experience was 60 days. It needed to be seasoned money in a bank account to be able to be used um, towards that purchase. And uh, it came as a big surprise to the client. And it took a little bit longer for them to reach that goal because they made me aware that they wanted to buy within 30 days of their lease ending. Um, thankfully, that story ended well. Um, and they had the ability to go month to month, but that could have ended a lot worse. Um, another example, just from my own personal experience, 
please don't buy furniture to put into your new home before you've signed on the dotted line. Before your money is wired and a key is in your hand, you should not be spending any money that could shift your debt to income ratio because the last thing any member of your purchasing team wants to have to tell you is that you got a little too excited and now you no longer qualify with the same rates, the same terms. So again, opportunities where you working with a trusted local professional can definitely help guide you away from those pitfalls that happen uh, more than I'd like to see. But Alana with eXp here, I'm gonna to toss it back to you, Lucy. Thank you, Alana. Great, great tips. And you'd, yeah, you'd be surprised how often that happens. And hey, if you purchase too much furniture and then you don't have a house to put it in, then you have a whole nother problem on your hands, don't you? Um, but those are some great tips to start us off on this conversation from the realtor perspective. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have local realtors and lenders to come on each and every week. So we're going to bring it to the lending side of things. I know that they kind of uh, poked at some things that the lenders will definitely, I'm sure, have something to chime in on. And then we'll go back to the realtor side of things um, and talk about some more do's and don'ts. So on the lending side of things, Peggy, why don't you start us off on that side? Yes, thank you, Lucy. Peggy Hornick with East Coast Mortgage Lenders. And um, boy, you got your you realtor partners are ver well versed in the do's and don'ts because you hit on a lot of the points that are so important. Um, the the one thing that I want to touch on is of a do is absolutely do get pre-approved way before you even call a realtor to see about looking at houses because that's your first most important step. Um, I have worked with clients sometimes a year in advance of them being able to qualify for a mortgage, but at least we have a roadmap. We know what needs to be done before they're ready to buy a home and it saves a lot of um, money because you don't want to get into a contract and get a, a home and pay for a home inspection and then find out that you're not qualified. So absolutely do get your pre-approval early. That way we can check your credit score. Um, some, some of the don'ts that you do not want to do is go out and open new credit cards or new accounts if you can avoid it because any new credit that is less than 12 months old is going to ding your credit. Um, the credit scoring models want to see 12 months of on-time payments before it really starts to boost your credit score. Um, uh, the other thing is if you are an hourly wage earner, try not to take unpaid time off within the short time that you're getting ready to get into contract because what happens with our uh, wage earners that are paid hourly, we have to average your income. And if there's a gap of unpaid um, time on your pay stubs, that's going to lower your average income. I've seen that recently where um, you know, nurses or uh, any hourly employees are, have taken time off and it's not paid for. And then I have to average the income and it comes in a little bit lower than expected. Um, let's see. Uh, I think Alana touched on not making any cash deposits. Cash uh, into a bank account is considered unsourceable funds. So we will not be able to use that money in the bank account unless it has been seasoned for 60 days. And the reason that 60 days is, is because when we start a loan application, I ask for the most recent two months of bank statements. So if that oldest bank statement shows a large deposit of cash or an unsourceable deposit, that is going to be questioned and probably backed out of the balance by the underwriter. So um, if you can avoid making cash deposits, absolutely do that. Um, let's see, do save your pay stubs and documents. If you're getting ready to buy a house, um, we're going to want W-2s for the last two years and pay stubs for the most recent 30 days. So save all your documents, know how to access your bank statements online um, because we'll be needing updated bank statements throughout the whole process. And that is it. I want to save some for Jessica because I know she'll probably have um, a lot of things as well. But um, those are my tips. Peggy Hornick with East Coast Mortgage Lenders. 
Thank you, Peggy. Very great tips. Um, loved all of those. And I loved the pre-approval one too, because a lot of people, you know, that they, before they even talk to anybody, right? They start chugging along, looking online, seeing houses. They're like, well, I think I can afford this. And then they get all of a sudden in love with something and they're like, they don't even know what they can afford. So that is truly like the first step is getting that pre-approval and having that conversation to see what you can even apply for, what you can even get, what is your purchasing power. So great tip along with all the other nuggets that you threw in there, Peggy. So really appreciate um, you always and can't wait to hear what Jessica has to add to it as well because she's a wealth of knowledge as well. So Jessica, take it away. Thank you for having me. And it's very hard to follow Peggy because she is amazing. Um, I can, I haven't worked, I haven't, this is the first time I've done um, one of these with her and I can already tell I have a lot to learn from her. But from my experience, um, my name is Jessica Bacora. I'm at Coast to Coast Lending. Uh, I'm on the Nate Joma team and we are, obviously we, um, I lend here in Florida and my do's and don'ts for a first time home buyer is um, do of course, get a pre-approval, but a lot of times people don't realize there's a big difference between pre-approval and pre-qualified. So you want to make sure you get a pre-approval because it's that step up. When you're making an offer with a pre-qualified letter, um, there are some things that may have been missed that aren't missed in the pre-approval process. So make sure you get that pre-approval letter because um, I know Peggy would definitely agree with me. It's a stronger approval and it'll help get you the one up on um, making offers on homes. My second do is to make sure you ask questions. First time home buyers are always reluctant. That's the first thing I tell them. This is your first home. If they say yes, I say, listen, please ask me as many questions as you can, because the more questions um, that I can answer for you, the more educated you are and the less fearful you are of the home buying process. Um, also, uh, uh, to piggyback on what also what Peggy said about the uh, your documents, make sure you file your 2020 taxes. That's also one of the questions I ask. Have you filed your 2020 taxes? Make sure that um, you have them in because I personally, I need to file my own taxes. So I'm right there with you if you haven't filed yet. Um, and of course, um, when you make an offer, we will continue to ask uh, for documents. And it's really wonderful if you can get those documents to us in a timely manner, because the faster you can get those documents to us, the better we can do our job for you. Um, and then of course the don'ts of home buying is to do not shop outside of the quote that goes, we usually, when we give you a pre-approval letter, we usually give you a cap. I would shop for homes, no more than let's say 300,000. Don't try, don't go shopping for $310,000 houses. Make sure that you stay within your budget because there's a reason why we give you a cap. And then of course, I'm gonna end on, don't be afraid to ask questions because that's what we're here for. And thank you so much. Awesome, Jessica. Great, great tips. Um, and I love how you structured that and ended on that note of just um, the fact that do not try to purchase something more than what you are pre-approved for. Like, it's so crazy. People be like, yeah, I can get a $300,000 house and, you know, let me go look at 200, 320 and then like negotiate it down. That's not the market we're in, like first and foremost. But I think that even when they get that pre-approval and they're like, oh, $300,000 and then they're only looking at houses at 300,000, they're setting themselves up for you know, failure, that, that's your hot height of your budget. Don't be afraid to look underneath that. Um, and such, such a great tip, uh, Jessica. So glad to have you on here for the first time today and um, always love hearing the conversation that comes from this. And we will have a little discussion portion if anybody has anything to add um, after everyone's spoken. But the lenders just spoke and gave us some great insight from the lending perspective. We're gonna head back on over to the realtor portion of things um, and hear from Cody. So Cody. Uh, what do you have to add to the do's and don'ts of, for first-time homebuyers? Thank you so much. Uh, it's Cody, Bourgeois Real Estate Group. Uh, please forgive me for being in and out. I'm, I'm kind of I'm trying to work and do this at the same time. So. Um, but as far as the topic, um, I think what I would say is because I'm actually in the process of trying to coach my daughter uh, you know, into her first-time ownership. And she almost made the mistake of trying to finance a vehicle at the same time that she is looking to apply uh, you know, for a loan. So I had to tell her that she has to 
figure out which one of those is more important to her right now because uh, the vehicle purchase will definitely hinder the home purchase. Um, the other thing is a lot of these first time home buyers, all they, all they are looking at is, you know, as far as their finances, what they would pay in mortgage every month. And I have to tell them, you know, you have to think about all your other expenses because, you know, even with your loan, they're going to take that into consideration. So, you know, you have to remember that you'll have to, you know, put a down payment on, uh, you know, your, your lights. So you'll have that bill every month. And then your water, you'll have that bill every month. Um, you know, the little things that you might pay for, Netflix, cell phone, you know, gas, food, you know, all those things you have to take into account when you're looking at what you're going to be spending monthly. So um, don't just think about what's your, what's your monthly mortgage payment is going to be. You got to, you know, consider all your expenses as whole. So, I think we you know, get your finances in order. Definitely find you know a good real estate professional that you can talk to that will walk you through the whole process, let you know how you know, things are going to happen, how things are done, so that you can properly prepare uh, for what you're going to embark on. So um, you know, especially you know when it comes to being pre-approved and finding out what you spend um, and, and what's going to be most appropriate for your situation. So that is what I have to add. And I'll give it back to you, Liz. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cody. Um, great, great tips. Oh, loving this, um, this do's and don'ts conversation because uh, that's definitely something to consider when you are looking at that grand scheme of things and you're like, don't just look at your monthly payment for your mortgage. You've got other bills. Look at your output and your export. And that's something that um, you'll also have a conversation with your lender and such, but definitely a good uh, mindset to be uh, going into it with. So thank you so much, Cody, for adding that great tip. And we are gonna go to Stacy now. What do you have to add to the conversation? <laughs> Well, um, you guys gave almost every tip that I already wrote down. So it is going to be a little difficult to follow up with any new information, but from the, from the realtor's point of view and from the lender's point of view, I really just want the first time home buyers to be aware of what the down payment's going to be, what the closing costs are going to be. And if there's any HOA dues, please, please, please take that into consideration because that is a big part of the home buying process and knowing what exactly you're approved for. Um, on the same token, I want you to really, really, really listen to your lender and get the paperwork in on time because that makes a big difference on the realtor point of view with loan commitment dates, with you know inspections, appraisals, everything like that. So listen to the lenders and please get them the paperwork as soon as you possibly can. Um, on the lender topic, please don't shop around to three, four, five different lenders just to try to save a, you know, an eighth of a percent or something. It's really not worth it. It's going to ding your credit and it's going to ding it hard. But on that same token, I want you to, there are things you can shop for. You can shop for homeowners insurance. You can ask around for different inspectors. Those are the few things you can shop around for but I would not start shopping around for lenders. Um, it's, it's really just not worth it in the end. And um, I think I covered mainly all the lender stuff too, but those are really the main aspects that what's really, really important for first time home buyers is just being aware of everything. Absolutely. Great tips to add to that. And you threw out some new information, Stacey. Um, when it comes to the HOAs, what a big one. Sometimes you're looking on the market and you can see these houses that you're like, wow, how can you get this house for this much? Like, that's a good deal. And if you got to look at the, the fine print, oh yeah, there's an extra 200, $300 a month you have to pay in HOA fees. So yeah, sometimes the prices of the homes can be less in those HOA communities because they're factoring in the fact that there's an HOA. So um, great, great tip uh, to add to the conversation. And we're going to have an open uh, discussion which I want to kind of start off with on, well, one, let me say my do is do communicate with your local professionals. Make sure that you are not hiding any information. Um, you know, being communicative is a really big piece of the puzzle. And 
I know as a first time home buyer, it's going to feel like there's a lot writing down in you. There's a lot of information, a lot of information to take in, but lean on your local professionals, ask them those questions, make sure you understand how things are piecing together and what those aspects are doing for you so that you can be better equipped to understand and as long as you have a good team behind you, you're going to be okay. They're going to answer those questions for you. And that communication is very important. If you have someone who's not communicating with you, then that's when you need to take a step away from that because communication from all parties involved, buyer, seller, uh, realtor, lender, title company, all of it, everybody needs to communicate to make the process work. <laughs> so, um, having a good team and just knowing that you do need to communicate as well with all the professionals that are involved um, to the best of your ability is a great um, aspect to put in there. So I just wanna throw that in there, that little um, nugget. Um, and I also kind of wanted to say, if anybody has any other things to add with the do's and don'ts after hearing everyone speak um, and in talking about the aspect that whenever someone is going through these changes, the aspects of a first time home buyer First of all, any home buyer, but particularly a first time home buyer, you're going to be going through so many more other changes in your life. Um, and it becomes a very emotional process. And, you know, the furniture, and there's so many things that you have to keep in mind about um, that it's really, really difficult to do that alone. And I know that the online world makes it very easy, makes it sound like you can do it all by yourself but really having a local person who's gonna be able to guide you through that, who's gonna answer the phone and it's not gonna be an online systematic process is gonna really be the, the step in which you wanna take. Um, so kind of just throwing that out there into the conversation as well. Does anybody have anything to add to the do's and don'ts for a first time? Oh, you'll see that. Oh, oh. I, I saw Eric I, first, so Eric, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so um, there's three, three things I actually, uh, nuggets that came up uh, between everybody giving their tips is, one, uh, getting uh, through what they call DU, which is desktop underwriting, especially in this uh, market right now, getting a D, uh, desktop underwriting and getting you through that does help you benefit you to get um, your offer accepted because you're pretty much already through the process. Uh, the second thing that I came up was the HOA um, that Stacy mentioned is you can be approved for 300,000, but now when you take an HOA into consideration, that buying power of 300,000 now becomes, I don't know what the equation is, but it becomes 250,000 or whatever the case may be. So definitely keep that in mind. And then the third thing I wanted to actually ask the lenders, um, that way they can kind of shed some light on it is if a client receives a gift, does that have to be into an account for 60 days? Mm, look at that some good nuggets thrown out there and I see Peggy raise her finger so go ahead Peggy <laughs> Eric that is a great great question and um, the answer for FHA loans is yes um, we have to verify funds in the donor's account for any gift funds and <clears throat> they'll usually ask for a month of bank statements for the donor, but if the underwriter sees large deposits in the donor's account, they can, and sometimes do, ask for the source of that deposit in the donor's account. So you don't want to have be having a gift donor that is, you know, having large amounts of unsourceable funds coming into their account. So that's that. Now, um, Stacy, thank you so much for saying. The, one of the don'ts is shop around for a lot of lenders. And I get this all the time. Everybody wants to know what's the rate? What's the interest rate today? What's the interest rate? Some days interest rates change two or three times a day. So if a, a first time home buyer calls lender A in the morning and gets their rate, sometimes then they'll call me in the afternoon and the rate can be completely different. Also, not all properties are the same. So interest rates are very much specific to individual property types because it's all risk-based. So unless a first-time homebuyer is giving the lender their credit score, the type of property they're buying, the loan amount, the sales price, the loan to value, the rate that somebody gives you is not going to be accurate unless I have 
all those pieces of information. And there's something called points or origination fees involved with interest rates. I usually always quote an interest rate with no origination fees because in this lending environment with such with such low interest rates, it's not worth it to pay points to get a lower interest rate. It, it would take you three to four years to recoup paying that money up front just to save a small amount monthly. But online, if you go to shop for rates, it's very typical for you know the online mortgage companies to put a very low rate. What they're not telling you is that that comes with a lot of additional closing cost in origination fees. So that's um, that's my tip for that. And Stacy, you touched onto that so well. Um, so thank you for that. It's not worth it to go shopping all over town. I see your eager hands. <laughs> yes, I do want to actually touch a little bit on that same topic of a lot of times first time home buyers, all they see and hear is what their friends and family are saying. Mm. So some of the issues I've run into, especially lately is the fact that for instance, I had a customer that got 2.1% interest, but she had a 15 year mortgage and it was conventional and she put 10% down. So she got a, a fantastic rate. Now she told another customer slash friend of mine that she got this great interest rate from this lender and the lender just was fantastic. But what she didn't say was the amount she was putting down, the type of property, the fact that she did the 15 year mortgage and all of those factors have a really big, you know, they mean a lot. So if you're someone that you'll have 3.5% down, you're getting an FHA loan and you're, you're buying a, a condo or, or something, then that's a huge difference in someone that's doing 15 year conventional with 10% down. So the problem like is that a lot of the buyers just hear people talking and the people talking are not qualified professionals. The people talking are consumers and the consumers don't know the products like we do. Now I'm a realtor, but I know a lot about financing because I'm in also the construction industry. So there's a difference between construction perm loan and an end loan. So I have to explain this probably 10, 15, 20 times a day. And that's why I'm pretty educated on a lot of these topics, but it's, it's a completely different product. So just compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Stacey. That's where we all come into play on this is we exactly. can guide you down the right path to talk to the right person. Yeah, absolutely. And and a okay. professional you're working with has the wherewithal to be able to guide you towards the best fit that they think will work for you. I know that most agents, I'm one of them, offers multiple options. I usually recommend, say, two people that I think you would absolutely click with. And I don't want you to get pre-approved by both of them. What I want you to do is have a conversation with each of them talk with them. Who are you comfortable with? Who do you vibe with? Who do you understand when you ask the same question? Who do you understand better? Who are you more comfortable reaching out to? Because ultimately they are just as tight with me as you are throughout the entire process. And that's why we offer multiple recommendations just want to throw that tidbit yeah, out there. No, that's a great um, specification because it's not that we're saying don't look at multiple lenders and like understand, like don't look at them at all. Like don't just choose one and that, that's the end all be all. But once you get, to, what, only choose one that you're going to give all of the information to. Make sure to have, open up that dialogue. And, um, you know, we've talked about it, like whether it is just uh, interviewing your professional that you're going to work with. Make sure that it's going to be something that works out. Because I've talked to clients before where they're working with other people and sometimes it just doesn't mesh. And it's like, it's okay. We don't have to work together. You know, we don't have to force a square into a circle. It's okay. <laughs> um, and Cody, I know that you've been trying to chime in and then we'll go to Jessica. Right. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I know that this is, you know, the, the, the biggest um, transaction that they're going to make in their life, uh, well, in the beginning anyway, don't be scared of the process. You're not the first to go through it and you won't be the last. Um, it is what it is. It's worked for all these years. 
just, you know, let your professionals guide you through the process. Um, you know, the other thing that I would recommend is that, you know, continue to think consistency because, you know, like with the lenders, for instance, they don't care about how much money you're sitting on right now. They want to see your history. They want to see that you've had income, that you pay your bills on time, that you're depositing money in an account. You know, they want to see that consistency. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, you can't keep changing bank accounts and changing cell phones. You know, keep changing. Just stay consistent. <laughs> so that's what I can say. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, Cody. Thank you. Um, and it, Jessica, go ahead. Yeah, it's all your turn. No, you're good. Because um, I don't know when to chime in. Like, when is the best time? Uh, um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, some great points. Um, Stacy and both Peggy brought up some great points about interest rates. I mean, interest rates, everyone's like, what's the lowest rate? What's the lowest rate? And you have to understand interest rates are based on home value, loan to value, debt to income, um, you know, your location of the home, the type of home. There's so many factors that go into it. Um, but I mean, I feel like Peggy and um, Stacey's did a great job explaining that. Um, the other conversation that I like to have is uh, obviously making sure that they're comfortable enough um, because a lot of times when you're buying a home for the first time, you're almost blind trusting your lender and your realtor to be behind you. And so, and there's a lot of things that are going to happen that you have absolutely no idea. So you just have this blind trust. So it is so important to have that initial conversation. So you have that, you can establish that trust uh, with your lender and with your realtor. Tour. And then, of course, I always like to add it in my initial conversation after I've done the pre approval and I send them shopping after the um, offer has been accepted, I prepare my, uh, my first time buyers to say, listen, home buying can be a messy process. There may be something that comes up either during the inspection or the appraisal or even in the financing that is unexpected. Um, and these are normal things and just to be prepared for it because there, of course, we always want that perfect loan that has that smooth process, but in every loan that we deal with is different and every process is different and is unique. And of course, if you have that blind trust in that person, we will do everything in our power um, to make sure that we are in your corner. So that's why it's so important to have the initial conversation because to, and also to be prepared for what may happen during the home buying process. Absolutely. And I think that that's a great point as well to, you know, even have that conversation to kind of tie it up in a bow is that all of every process, um, it's not going to be the same as your sister or your uncle or whoever. It is completely tailored to you. And there are so many little facets that you're going to have to go through. Um, and again, that communication is just going to be very important. Be prepared for something to come up, whether it be, you know, one electrical outlet that needs to be switched. But or whether it be, you know, something with your loan, something that you need to get documentation to, whatever piece it is, um, just be prepared to communicate about it and to look at all the options. And if you're working with the right professionals, they're going to give you those options already automatically. They're going to say, you know, hey, this came up in inspection. Um, you know, this, this little piece is broken, but guess what? It's 10 bucks at Home Depot. You know, you don't have to throw away the whole house because of one little thing. And I think that, you know, sometimes, especially if you're a new home buyer, you can get very overwhelmed and you're like, oh, well, it's not perfect. And it's like, literally no house is perfect. There are brand new houses that aren't perfect, which if you're getting new construction, always get an inspection. Um, but, you know, just like things like that, like people don't think about, oh, I'm getting a new house. I don't need an inspection. People, humans are humans and humans make mistakes. Humans, you know, it's, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Breathe. <laughs> just breathe. <laughs> so we just had a really great conversation, guys. If you guys are just tuning in right now to um, our conversation about do's and don'ts for first time home buyers. It was really great with these local professionals who came on here to share their big brains in real estate and just have this discussion. If you're turning in right now, make sure you rewatch this. You can always rewatch it on our YouTube channel, Arrow Title Services. And if you have any questions for the professionals who are on here, make sure you guys go reach out to them on their Facebook pages. It's linked in the description of this video. 
and they will be happy to answer any questions. A conversation is always free. Do not forget, especially if you're on the buying side of things. I'm just saying you don't pay for your realtor. The sellers do. Please know that. That's a very big thing for first time home buyers that they don't understand. They think that they're paying out to the realtor and that's not true. So it literally costs you nothing. There are many things in life that are free, but um, to have that professional guidance and um, curated knowledge. So take advantage of it while you can. Um, and so we're going to go into the second portion, which is the number one top tip of the week, because this is Thursday's top tips in real estate. So each of these professionals are going to give you their number one top tip for this week in this real estate market, which is insane. And we're going to go right back to Eric, who is going to give us his top tip. Well, thank you, Lucy. Uh, I came prepared this time. Uh, <laughs> did my homework ahead of time. Um, my top tip of the week is make sure as your client's professional that you are communicating the current market conditions, meaning that the pre-approval thing that we've been talking about all segment here is very, very important. I am still having clients, which is okay, asking me to go view a house on a week from now when the market conditions, that house will not be around one week from now. <laughs> so uh, just communicating that to your clients and it's never to push them into any type of situation. It's just to educate them and just be like, hey, this is what the market is reflecting right now. Oh, that's a good one, especially with how hot, it's like hotcakes out there, guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Anyone on here, well, they're all like, yes. yes. <laughs> so great tip, Eric. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Alana. What's your number one top tip of the week? Uh, Alana with eXp Realty. Uh, my top tip for this week, I'm going to just touch again on something that we already went over in this segment and frame it a little differently. My top tip is to be very aware as you are going through a purchase process, who you're talking with about it. If you're talking to family members who might not be incredibly supportive, maybe you want to avoid throwing out every single detail of the upheavals emotionally that you're experiencing. Because as we've said, this is a very emotional process. So those family members or friends or people who are knowledgeable and can help benefit the decision making is a different um, audience than the general public telling them about everything you're dealing with as you're dealing with. Because our job is to try to help you manage the emotions. And it's really challenging to do that the more people that you invite in to share their opinion, whether valid or not. So that's my tip for the week. That's a good one, Alana. That's a real good tip, especially with how, you know, hot and heavy things can get. Again, I said that earlier, it's an emotional process. And like we said, it's tailored to each individual person. So just because something's going wrong here and you don't want to give out information that is going to be like non-relevant to someone else. You don't um, want it to be challenged by people who don't know what they're talking about because all right. it adds is really uncertainty and insecurity with the team that you have hand selected to guide you. Correct. Yes. Great, great tip. Thank you, Alana. Always wealth of knowledge, everyone on here. All right, lending side of things, top tip of the week, Peggy. Tell us what yours is. Okay, Peggy Hornick with East Coast Mortgage Lenders. My top tip is, of course, get your pre-approval early. It's never too early to get pre-approved, but also get an estimate of what the closing costs are. My first time home buyers are always, always, <laughs> and yes, and get the estimate from your trusted title service, Aero Title. Um, they're awesome. But most of my home buyers, first time home buyers are surprised. They think it's just, they're just focusing in on the down payment. But then on top of that, Florida is a very expensive state for closing costs. Um, since we don't have, uh, state income tax, the way our state gets our revenue is through real estate transactions. So that all plays in. So get a, it's a, either a fee worksheet, a loan estimate, your lender, prof, lending professional, Jessica, I'm sure has done many of those in the last uh, year as I have as well. Uh, just get those numbers. So you know, the total amount that you have to come to closing with, which includes closing costs and your first year homeowners insurance premium. That's my top tip. Good one, Peggy. Good one. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jessica, what about you? What is your number one top tip of the week? 
Um, just kind of kind of I'm going to circle back to get a pre approval, uh, not a pre qual pre qualification letter There are two different things make sure you get your pre approval. Um, don't shop within your means so if we give you a price to shop to please shop within your means, of course, if there are any HOA fees that price does go down and always check with your lender on that and then, of course, ask questions, um, because that's what we're here for is to be a resource um, and, of course, if anyone has questions for me. My name is Jessica Pokora. I'm at Coast to Coast Lending on the Nate Joma Mortgage Team. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Jessica. Great to have you too. All right, and uh, we are going to go back to the realtor side. Cody, top tip of the week. Oh, you there? Can you hear me? Yep. Mm, yes. But you're frozen. Can you hear me? Okay. We can. Oh no, we can't hear you. Here, go down. I'm, I'm gonna Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Try one more time. All right. So, um, mine is basically what Eric was saying. Biggest thing I've been dealing with lately is, uh, I think you sh people should educate themselves on the state of this market. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're buying or whether you're trying to rent. There's a ton of competition out there. Every house has five, six, ten people fighting for it. Um, I, I think even some realtors and brokerages are not aware of how quickly things are moving because, you know, they'll want people to go view these properties, and I have to explain to them like, listen, they don't have time. This property is going to be gone. You're you're already sitting on multiple applications, so they don't have time for that. You know what I mean? They got to like a property from what they see in the pictures that we send. And if they want it, we have to jump on it right away. I mean, and that's just how quickly things are moving. So uh, it's just, you know, everyone should be aware of, of the speed at which things are moving so that there is no confusion when uh, your, your realtor is telling you, you know, maybe you don't have time to go see something. So that's my top tip. Great. Thank you, Cody. Great addition to the conversation as always. And we're going to go over to Stacy. What is your top tip of the week? So everybody said do's for their top tips of the week. And I'm going to say you don't. So I don't want buyers to expect to get closing costs from a seller. It is flat out just not going to happen in this market. Your best option to try to get something from the seller is after negotiation, if something major happens during the inspection report. So that's my top tip of the week for you. Mm, that's a good, that's a juicy one. <laughs> that, that is definitely a good one, Stacy. Thank you so much. Um, guys, always filled with great top tips. And I do want to give the opportunity to anyone who is uh, has an announcement coming up. Does anybody have any announcements that they would like to um, share. Alana? Everybody watching, there are so many houses that have come on the market this week. If you're waiting till next week to start making decisions, you'd better rethink that. Now is the time. They're here right now and there's more coming on. So talk to your favorite professional. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Stacey. Um, anyone else? Announcement? Announcement? I have a quick announcement. Okay. Go ahead, Stacey. If anybody wants to learn about the new construction at Homecrete Homes, you can come see me on Sunday or Monday this week. I'll be there Sunday from 12 to 5 and Monday 11 to 5. It's on Savona Boulevard. And if you have any questions, reach out to Lucy or myself and you can call me or any of these fine realtors and lenders here. I have to go pick up my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank have you for joining day, us, everyone. Stacey. Um, Great tip. Yeah, new construction is crazy right now. So it's good to, um, you know, have that knowledge and everything. So thank you, Stacy. Thank you. And all right. So I'm any anyone else? Cody, go ahead. Hey, 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 can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, of course, uh, as usual, every week, I, I'll tell you, uh, I'm available for, for my services. Uh, I will give you my best. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I may be listing a property here that I previously sold. Uh, so that's coming up and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. It. I love coming soon because it makes people come back for more. <laughs> right.
I just Go want ahead, to throw Eric. it out there. I want to just congratulate my clients tomorrow. Uh, they're closing on their dream home up in Sebastian. So uh, congratulations, Cliff and Monica Sear on the purchase of your new home tomorrow. Oh, I Ooh. love that. A little congratulations <laughs> shout out. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Anyone else with announcements before we cut the check. <laughs> Love it. Um, so guys, uh, if you guys are just tuning in right now, great, great, great conversation that we just had an episode that we had today of Thursday's top tips in real estate. Make sure you guys rewatch it, whether it be here on Facebook or on YouTube at Aero Title Services. Um, we have a plethora of information on there from every single topic that we've done through this series since I believe June of last year. Um, we've been doing it every single week strong and we will be back again um, at 2 p.m. on Thursdays. And we hope you guys will join us as well as if you have any questions, the conversations are free. Feel free to reach out to us at Aero. We can connect you with any of the professionals that you have questions with if you or just go directly to the description of the video click on their Facebook pages even if you aren't looking to purchase right now oh this is going to be my top tip of the week and I, I skipped over myself how rude of myself <laughs> um, that if you are looking to purchase in the next six months to a year or whatever it might be I see so many people wait until like they think that they are ready in the moment to actually start the process have the conversation, make sure that you are as in the position you think you're in. You can start that today. Doesn't mean that you have to purchase today. It's a conversation that you can have now for later. Uh, we talked about the other day in our last episode that there are some people who have worked with clients for a few years now, um, just trying to help prepare them. So you're not going to be a burden. This is what we do every single day. This is why we come on here every single week to share with you guys these tips because we are in this every single day in the mud and making sure you guys are taken care of. Um, you know, just speak with your local professional and make sure you guys are pre protected and um, understanding in the situation that we're in right now with this beautiful market, but crazy market. So until um, next week, when we will, well, there are, we will actually be taking off next week, but then we will be back the following week for Thursday's top tips in real estate. Hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you guys again soon. Have a great rest of your day and weekend. Thanks guys. <laughs>